Welcome to Remote Records with the Toolbox, how to copy data between Business Central environments. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, if you haven't heard about my Toolbox, it's it's an app for Business Central, it's an app source, uh, and it's, an, it's a lot of tools that I first started building for myself in order for you know, to handle all the, the art things and the uh, stuff that came across my desk now that we're in the cloud and no longer have access to SQL and all those uh, technologies. Um, now the toolbox has kind of grown out of just something I need uh, and there's a lot of people now using it for all sorts of things. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you the latest feature that has uh, been added to uh, to the toolbox and that's concept of remote records um, and what is a remote record well the scenario that I have had lots of time is that um, we have a project and there's one two three sandboxes sometimes and a production environment and you're setting stuff up in one sandbox and then you move stuff with config packages back and forth and um, there's a lot of data moving hands, uh, moving between places. Um, and the fact that we are still kind of moving files really annoyed me. Uh, and so I, I, I came up with what I'm gonna show you now, which is, is another way of doing it. Um, and we might as well get right into that. So here is, here is my toolbox. And the toolbox is at the core things. There, there is a way to to write AL code. I write, write a piece of AL code. I click run, and the code is executed. Um, now, it's kind of on, on on the left. You have the code you write. On the um, on the right, you have the output. And right now. Um, it's redirecting. So if, if in this case it's a message, so if I, I turn this off and, and run this again, we get a normal message as you would expect from this piece of code. Uh, there is no extension deployment and all that stuff. You just write code directly. Um, and I let's do something slightly more different here. Uh, let's declare a, a customer table record and I can do a cfc dot find set then repeat until c dot next equals zero and um, let's just turn this back on while I remember it and then I could do message whoops message c dot name also get the fields here is C dot name and I probably need an end to my begin. I can run this. I, I get customers out of this thing. Um, and this is also all running local. Um, and for decades we have had the ability to do C dot change company and then so let's move something over to another company so in in code we it was quite easy to in code copy data between different companies but in the same environment in the same database but as soon as as we want to go outside the um the environment we're in then we're kind of out of luck but so to to my own version of al code that we have here I have added a new function called change environment. So now I'm changing C and I want to connect to an environment called ACS and I want to con use a company called Kronos Canada Incorporated. So now I told that this variable is pointing somewhere and, and let me just hit run. And the first time this takes a couple of seconds Maybe it takes more because I may, may have turned the security off. No, there we go. So you can see we got some different names here. Um, so so now 
this is data from another thing and and this is where i can do this show the, so right now and it's hard to see here but i'm in an environment called bc21 and i have another environment called acs so if i go into that one uh, and i go to customers in this one you can see i i i, I did just to for my own sanity i added a ACS, which is name and environment, but let's say I add a new customer here, uh, and we call this customer YouTube demo. So I go back, go back to this one, and say run, and now I see this here. And of course, if if uh, if I did a record dot D, or let's call it C two um i could go and say uh, c2 copy from c and then c2 insert um in that case we should probably do a, uh, a c dot set filter uh, on the name and that should be uh, u asterisk um let's run this so now the filter we set on this environment is sent to the other environment uh, and, and, and work there. So for right now, we only got this one left. And uh, if let's go into customers on this environment, now we have this customer here. Um, remote records are always read only. So it's in operations like this, it's always a pull. You were always pulling data because remote records are always, always read only. The reason for that is that I cannot guarantee that everything happens. We cannot have have a transaction across uh, because there's web services behind this to, to do everything. And I, you cannot have a, a, a database transaction that spawns m multiple uh, web services connections. Uh, so in order for the the transactional model to be correct and still be proper BC, um, then it's always a pull because then we're only writing in the one we're at. And, and here we can have a, a database transaction that spawns multiple outgoing web service calls. Anyway, so with this you can just you know write your own data synchronization and figure out what you need to move or if you need to only grab certain fields or, or all that good stuff um, and you can do that in code as you can see here uh, but we also have a, a a package version of this so if i go up here and say remote packages um, and uh, here's a, here's a couple uh, and and we can actually start by uh, by creating a new one. So I will call this uh, we'll call this customers description customers because I am that inventive. Uh, environment name Ace ACS and uh, Chronos Canada. Right now you have to write these out. Uh, and and with that out of the way so we know where the remote is then or what the remote is um we can say okay i need table 18 what do i need well do i need only new records only new records plus those updated i want to transfer everything copy over um we can go with only new records again so let's quickly add yet another one over here more YouTube there you go we have that go back to this one we can decide if we want to uh, validate on insert on modify um, maybe we won't and then we have a local number of records at number of records at the remote so we can start by getting record counts so now we're just gonna query the same thing in the code if we if we did a customer.count uh, in the code I just wrote, 
same thing. So right now we can see that we have eight records here. We have nine on the remote. So I can go pull. And we're now pulling it. We pulled one record in three seconds. The first time you do stuff, there's like a, a slight startup time for these things. So if we go into customers now, we have more YouTube. So then there's a couple of features here behind the scene that we can define filters uh, on, on, on the table. We can also define fields, uh, actual fields exceptions, more like it. So I can say that, um, and this lookup is still kind of wonky, uh, Telex, we want to exclude it or we want to actually do validation on it. If we, we don't specify anything, then we're not doing anything. So it's more like an exception. Um, so where is this other thing and how does security work? Is a, probably a, a good question to ask right about now. Um, and because in both in, in the package and the code, I just said the name of the environment and a company name. Uh, but in my setup here, I have a remote uh, toolbox uh, configuration. So first you, you specify your tenant ID. So the tenant ID of the remote. So potentially you can, you can, you can use this to communicate between tenants also. It doesn't have to be within the tenant, but uh, first version of this is cloud only. So we don't connect to you know, on-prem and Docker's and all that stuff. Maybe later um, if, if there are paying customers who are asking for that, I think. Uh, then there's a application ID and a secret value. And what is that? Well, in all of this to work, you have to create a app registration in, in, uh, in Azure. So I have done that here. Call it remote toolbox 77 and we can see that was the one that i had here 77 uh, and this one has added a um, api read write all and use read uh, as an application uh, permission um, then i have created a a secret in here so there there's a secret which is what goes into to this one. So we the application ID and the secret. Um, so that's kind of what's needed outgoing. So what tenant you want to communicate with and, and the application ID and the secret uh, for doing authentication. On the receiving side of things, so here uh, in, in the one called ACS, if I go into AAD, uh, Active Directory, Azure Active Directory applications. You can see that I have added the the 77 um, as a an app user, um, and I have given it whatever Business Central access I feel this is this one needs, and I've you can see I've given it a lot actually, but. The most important thing here is there's a, uh, a permission set that's called Remote AL. I think it's called Remote AL Compiler in this case. Um, that one needs to be assigned. If that one is not assigned to the application, nothing works. This is the entry bar. Then everything else will define what data you can access. Uh, but this, so the application needs, uh, the. The application needs to be registered, of course, but it also needs this permission set. Otherwise, it will uh, disallow it. So we, we, if we go up here and then let's disable this thing and close out and go back to the other one. Um, and I can just run my program here, I guess. I get an, an authentication error saying that, hey, doesn't work. Um, so, so that is that is how you you set up if you want to allow inbound 
uh, remote toolbox, remote records. Because one thing is important to understand here that that com com compared to other APIs, this is an API that opens all tables uh, within and in this case, I have given it super data, so it's truly all tables that it's like, that's accessible. But if you want to, you no, know, just allow a remote to pull customer table or you know like master data vendor accounts uh, stuff like that, then you can just create a, uh, a permission set that only gives you access to that, and then the connection is limited. So even though I might be able to write any type of variable here, uh, table here, it will give a permission error. That is uh, remote records uh, for, for my toolbox. And um, this is something that I'm using already now in, in case where, you know, customers running something in UAT and now we need to, and maybe you know, sometimes we actually have a case where we, you know, keep tweaking the parameters in, in, uh, in one environment and then, you know, synchronizing it over. Uh, and, and that's done just by having a package uh, like the one we just created. And I think we are running new records plus updated. Um, Plus updated means that it will actually, so I was trying to show you this thing again. Uh, new records plus updated means that it will compare the timestamp uh, and, and if the timestamp is newer, then it will transfer it. So you can uh, you can try out the, the toolbox uh, in um, uh, it from the link below. Uh, the um, the, the trial version is read only so you can't really you can you can uh, you can grab some records you can set all this up but you cannot actually uh, store the records uh, in the new place uh, that requires a license but there's also a link down below for getting one of those um, so thanks for watching and uh, try it out thank you